ugly, ridiculous, useless, and I saw a metal monster, a hulking metal beast. Dear Toastmasters and guests, dear Madam Toastmaster, the picture you probably have in your minds right now is of a really big and lousy object which has a lot of metal in it. Um, I actually picture some work by Zorab Tsarateli, he likes that kind of stuff. But actually today I'm not going to be talking about his works, the, ob the object of such damn criticism is this. Look at this. It's the Eiffel Tower. Can you imagine this? How come this most elegant and still modern object of architecture was called a useless and monstrous object? That just seems impossible. But that was the truth. I'm going to tell you how it, it was back then when it was built and why the opinion of the whole world has turned, com completely turned. We seem, to, we, we regard the Eiffel Tower as one of the best and most romantic objects of the world. It's the top tourist destination, the most visited one in the whole world. And if you you and your girlfriend come to Paris, the first thing you do, you go to the Eiffel Tower, you climb upstairs, you kiss there, and you take selfies, you dine at a fancy restaurant, and then post some fancy pictures on Facebook. So it's actually a very, very cool destination for all of us. But things were different 130 years ago when it was built. Because, in fact, one of the best and leading French intellectuals, painters, writers, sculptors, among them Alexandre Dumas Jr., Guy de Maupassant, and Charles Gounod, wrote and published an open letter protesting against the construction of the Eiffel Tower. Why? What did they say? Basically, what they said was, this is like a gigantic black chimney, uh, factory chimney, that is going to completely destroy the city landscape, because it would dominate the city. It was a really flat one at that time. And they were not alone in their damning criticism, because the residents of nearby homes protested as well, and they feared that the, this huge building of 300 meters would come crashing down and kill them. And one resident of Paris actually sued the city government because he thought that you know, there was malfeasance on their side. That he, would, he might be killed as a result. But nonetheless, Gustave Eiffel and his company persisted and they managed to persuade the city council that that was a good project. That, that would have a lasting impact on the city. Then, as, as time went by, people realized that this was actually a quite a useful construction because it, was, it, be, it started to be used as a radio and TV transmitter, and it is so today. And also, it is used as a meteorological station, and it, it was used extensively in aerodynamics research. So as you see, there are a lot of really useful things about the Eiffel Tower. But of course, to the whole world, it has come to symbolize the beauty and the elegance of the industrial age and of the modern age. And it also the symbol of a whole nation. Because we, when we say France, the first thing that pops into our mind is probably the Eiffel Tower. It just absolutely intertwined. <coughs> so I think there is a good lesson to be learned from here, from the, this story. And this is, uh, it is this. When 
people are actually quite conservative. Most of us are quite conservative, conservative in our aspirations, in our tastes and beliefs. Especially as we grow older, we become more and more conservative people and less tolerant people. So when we actually see some and face some new radically new ideas or thoughts or objects, be it the method of communication, method of transportation, etc., or an architectural object, the first gut reaction that m many of us have is to dismiss it as a fad that won't catch on. But I would like you to think about it, to think about this story and keep it in mind that as time goes by, you might realize that thing you thought was just a fad becomes a life changer. As we've seen, I'm 25, I've seen a number of technological revolutions in my time. The internet, the social networks, and you know, Uber and that kind, that kind of stuff. So think about it, remember it, and don't make mis the mistakes that Gideon Pasan made. I don't mistake.